Now it's time to bring you the overpowered build that has been long overdue, with hundreds of you commenting on my videos as to why I haven't covered this weapon yet and why it's never included in my top 5 weapon videos. Well today we're putting all of that to rest as we are going to be looking at the Blasphemous Blade, one of the most unique weapons in Elden Ring with some absolutely godlike potential, this thing can be turned into an absolute beast. So if you're excited to see how to create the best build around this weapon, definitely hit that like button down below if you want to stay up to date with more videos such as this and get involved with recent polls because I actually let you guys choose this particular episode as to what weapon we'll cover and over 45% of you wanted exactly this. So if you want to be involved next time, definitely make sure that you subscribe so you never miss out on those polls and those future videos to help you become the Elden Lord. But anyway, enough jibber jabber, let's jump straight into this insane Blasphemous Blade build. Obviously, just for those of you that don't know how to get this weapon, if you've just started playing Elden Ring or are still on your way to complete the game, you do obtain this by defeating Rykard, the boss that's hidden away at the end of the Volcano Manor questline, and upon defeating him, you can use his Remembrance to trade that in for this ungodly weapon. I mean, just look at it. But what it lacks in appearance, it certainly makes up for power and its also healing abilities, believe it or not, when defeating enemies in your game, allowing you to clear your screen just like this whilst replenishing pretty much your entire health bar at the same time. So obviously I'm just going to throw up these stats for you on screen for this particular build and as per usual it's a level 150 build which is more than happy to carry you into multiple new game pluses and defeat pretty much anybody online if they decide to invade you or you decide to invade them. So we're starting off with 50 vigor, 25 mind, 25 endurance, 35 strength, 15 dexterity, 10 Intelligence, 59 Faith, and 10 Arcane. So essentially with those stats we are putting as much into Faith because we're going to be making use of the Taker's Flame which is the Ash of War with this weapon and that scales most with Faith. It does also scale ever so slightly with Strength but not as much but Strength is still useful for when we're actually using the weapon itself. And then we've got 15 Dexterity just because that's required to actually use the weapon but it's not its most important scaling factor and then you can pretty much mix Mind and Endurance to fit whatever play style that you have, whether you want slightly more endurance to have a better armor set or slightly more mind to spam the absolute hell out of the skill power. And then obviously just on that as well, we're going to be pairing those stats with some pretty insane talismans. And of course, as we're going to be utilizing the skill power a whole bunch, it is most important that we're using the Shard of Alexander. It's the talisman that boosts your skill powers damage the most in the entire game and is obviously integral for this particular build. But then we're also pairing it with the Fire Scorpion Charm to again boost the damage that we're dealing with this Ash of War because it is based around fire damage and to help us with the amount of FP consumption we're also running the Carrion Filigree Crest and due to the fact that the Fire Scorpion Charm also makes us take more damage we are also using the Dragon Crest Shield. For me specifically I was running the Great Shield which is the best variant of the Dragon Crest Shield but even if you just got the normal one or the plus two or plus one variant run whichever one that you can to help negate the extra damage you're going to be taking whilst running the Fire Scorpion scorpion charm. So obviously with those four talismans we've got a perfect balance of extra protection, extra damage output and also an extra amount of uses as we're going to be using less FP. But then if you want to increase the damage output even further you can also use the wonder physic and more specifically put the flame shrouding crack tier inside along with pretty much any other crack tier that you want. And that's because the only thing that's going to boost the damage realistically out of all of the tiers is the fire shrouding crack tier and then you can mix it with any other tier that's going to fit to your playstyle, whether you want to prioritize health and having a healing tier in there, damage negation tiers like the upper line bubble tier, or even stamina regen, whichever one's going to help you out the most with your playstyle, I highly suggest obviously putting that as your second tier in the Wonder Physic, but I personally also go with the Stone Barb Crack tier, just because when I'm using my attacks, I then have a better chance of staggering my enemies, especially in a PvE situation, so coming up against bosses, allow me to obviously do a lot of damage, and then if for whatever reason they survive a couple of hits, they are then most likely going to be staggered, allowing me to critical hit them, finishing them off if they hadn't died already. And I know I don't necessarily go into the armors in these videos, but if you wanted to know what I'm using in this particular video, I'm using the Raging Wolf armor set. Essentially, all you need with armor is to use whatever you want, as long as you've got the medium roll available to you to obviously dodge attacks efficiently. But obviously, use an armor set that also gives about 51 poise.
series which with 25 endurance is more than enough to fit that in whilst also using this weapon. But other than that the only other thing to note as well are the incantations that we're running so we're also using flame give me strength along with golden vowel and then you can pretty much use whatever incantations you want. But essentially the only two incantations you 100% need to be running are flame give me strength because that will boost both your stamina regen and also fire damage which again obviously helps with this particular weapon being a fire weapon and then golden vow again just to give you the generic boosts for all damage types up to 10% and also damage negation of 10% helping you obviously survive most attacks. In the gameplay that you're also seeing in the background I didn't really delve into the other incantations mainly because we're obviously focusing on using the skill power with this weapon that's going to be where most of our FP is going to be used but if you want to mix and match and obviously catch your opponents off guard and use things like black flame or other incantations that can maybe hit at range feel free to mix and match that and make it into your own and then with all of this combined I know it's a lot but if we are using all of this we are then creeping into the 4000 damage plus threshold obviously allowing us to pretty much one shot most enemies in the game along with one shotting most of our invaders and people that we invade ourselves making PvP extremely easy as long as you can get a hit off with the Taker's Flame. It can be hard to obviously get the hits off sometimes just where the Taker's Flame takes a little while to charge up before actually releasing that volcanic eruption in front of you and even then it's still a little bit easy to dodge but you can catch people off guard with it. I did that multiple times especially when you're fighting multiple people you can sort of go to aim for one person but then sort of switch last minute and hit somebody else and like I say essentially one shot them if you've got all of the buffs active but even if you don't you'll leave them with about 20% of their health left allowing you to follow up with a quick attack or maybe even a heavy attack to finish them off and then just as you probably think that we're finished talking about how good this weapon is I'm still yet to say anything about the health regen that you get from this weapon yes your health regenerates in two different ways when you've got this weapon in your hand for every just generic kill doesn't have to be with the ash of war just any kill that you get with the weapon at all the game will replenish 4% of your health along with 40 flat HP points so let's just say for argument's sake you've got a thousand health you'll be getting a flat amount of 40 HP but then also another 40 HP from the 4% bonus as well but if that doesn't sound like it's enough if you just get a successful hit with the taker's flame it doesn't have to kill them but if you get a successful hit with that ash of war you get both a 150 flat HP granted back to you as well as 10% of your overall health so again going with a thousand health you get the 150 base and then a hundred extra with the 10% giving you 250 HP with just a successful connection of the Ash of War. Obviously if you're hitting multiple people, let's just say four in total, you're literally filling your whole health bar back with one use of the Ash of War. So if you can play the game correctly and get all of your hits off, you can literally just run off of mana potions, stealing your health from your enemies as you take them out. Whilst obviously doing this video, it made it abundantly clear why you guys were heavily suggesting it so much because it was a whole lot of fun using it, taking on people in a PvP situation whilst also decimating pretty much every enemy in the main game as well. I can't lie, there were a few bosses that you've probably already seen footage of, especially the Astral boss along with people like Moog and also Dragons in the game which are a bit more resistant to the Taker's Flame but apart from Moog and the Dragons, the Astral boss was an okay fight and just took a few more hits than usual so if you are coming up against a more resistant enemy then of course it's going to be a bit longer and a harder task to take them on and I think that's probably why I never gave this weapon as much credit in the past because I'd always use it against those types of enemy trying to uh, take on people that were ultimately resistant to it making me feel like this weapon was absolute trash but for the other 95% of the game this weapon excels and even stun locks enemies keeping them on the floor so they can't even touch you whilst you consistently do upwards of three four thousand damage making this game an absolute breeze but like I said this was a lot of fun to use and I had an absolute blast making this video so if you haven't got this weapon already or you haven't used it before I highly recommend that you do so obviously take this build go and have an absolute blast with it and I promise you won't regret it thank you again to everybody that bombards me with comments for using this weapon and obviously those that chose this in the poll for opening my eyes just to how good this weapon actually is I'm sorry that I doubted you and uh, I'll be sure to never do that ever again and for those of you that are new around here or watch the videos and aren't necessarily subscribed you may have missed out on opportunities like that poll to have your input on these types of videos because I do want to have you
you guys engaged. We're closing in on 10,000 subscribers and we've built like a really unique community, I feel. So I want to also get you guys involved with the videos as much as physically possible. And I know I'll be running a few more polls like that in the future. So if you want to stay up to date and be notified when things like that happen, make sure that you're subscribed. That way you can have your say and ultimately never miss another future video as well. And like I said at the beginning, if you happen to like this video at any point, do be sure to hit that like button down below. It lets me know that you've enjoyed it and you want to see more videos like this because we've still got a whole host of weapons to cover and make extremely overpowered builds on. So, so if you want these types of videos to keep coming, I've got more than enough in the firing lines. But yeah, that is essentially everything I need to say. Go get this weapon. Go have an absolute blast using it. And also don't be afraid to let me know in the comments how you can improve this build. It's obviously very apparent in the gameplay, but I'm not the best at Elden Ring. And I know you guys are legends and wizards at the game, so I'm sure there's probably one or two ways to make this build better. Let me know in the comments if you have a way to do that, because I'm sure most of you will also be intrigued to get the most out of this weapon as physically possible. This was just the best optimized way for me to do it, but like I say, there's probably a way to get even more out of it. But otherwise, I just want to say thank you guys for watching these videos and showing the support that you have done so far. It really does mean a lot. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day and continue to do so. But for now, I guess I'll catch you in the next video of whatever it is that we make. Bye-bye.